between us By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You brought me out of the grave You brought me into the light You brought my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens Awakens, awakens me Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens Awakens, awakens me Hallelujah, Father We just bless you and praise you this morning, oh God Is shaking. All the dead are coming back to life, back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Show you. 
Jesus is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Church, would you just sing a new song? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Death could not hold you. The veil torn before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. And yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name. Jesus Christ, my King. 
What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. You have no rival. You have no What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Church, would we just begin to understand how powerful the name of Jesus is? That when we speak the name of Jesus into a room of darkness, it immediately lights up. There is nothing that can hide from the name of Jesus. So Lord, we praise you. We praise you, Lord God. We praise you, Jesus. You are so worthy of our praise this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the rooms that are uncovered today, for the places that are lit up today. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the chains that are breaking and the walls that are crumbling, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we praise you this morning, Lord God, because there is no one like you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everybody. Go ahead and say hello to the folks around you, and we'll send the kids to the back.
And we're going to go ahead and continue on in an attitude of worship this morning as we get ready to receive the offering. Um, does anybody need an offering envelope this morning? Did everyone get one that needed one when they came in? Hallelujah. I also want to remind everybody that we have Pastor Ron Simpkins joining us this morning, and uh, I know that you're going to be blessed, and we want to be a blessing to him as well. So we're going to be receiving a special offering for him. We'll do it at the same time, but if you want to uh, be a blessing to him, you can just write on the envelope for guest speaker or on your check, write guest speaker. Uh, still make it out to the church, not to him. Otherwise, it causes him all kinds of tax problems. So, <laughs> And we'll make sure that he gets that. Hallelujah. So let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 17 and 18. And it says, Let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer deserves his wages. Church, this morning, I just want to encourage you to be generous with him because the reality is, is that he's a man who's been preaching and teaching the gospel for longer than I've been a Christian. And uh, he is he is worthy of double honor. So I would just encourage you, bless him. You're going to be blessed. I know it. I mean, we want to be a blessing to him. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and take our tithes and offerings in our hand as we ask the Lord's blessing over it. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to to be in your presence, but also, Father, for the opportunity to learn from a very uh, mature and wise man of God, Father. We, we recognize what a blessing that is, and we're so grateful. And, Father, this morning, as people are giving with generosity and love, I just thank you that you would bless them, that you would honor their sacrifice and their generosity, that you would meet every single need. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, as the offering basket is making its way around, as always, we have a couple of announcements. Uh, one, I want to remind everybody, uh, uh, Marianne, how long are we going to be having the basket out for? Through November. So through the end of November, we have a basket along the wall over here um, by the double doors. And we're just receiving um, any any stuff for, for babies. So we got, uh, uh, what's it say up here? Clothes, blankets, diapers, wipes, lotions, books, etc. for either uh, uh, babies or, or young uh, mothers. And we just wanna be a blessing to them. And, and we're gonna be gathering that um, all through the end of November and delivering that to Hands of Hope. But I would encourage you, if you have any of that stuff, uh, to go ahead and donate it. If you don't have any of that stuff, go out and buy it and then donate it. And uh, let's just be a blessing for those those young mothers as, as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Next up, much to, uh, I guess, uh, to, to minis. Did you ever lose a word? You try to find a word and you can't find <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, all of that. Much to Jan's joy. We are going to move it to Saturday. Um, it was on October 13th. It was going to be now. It's going to be October 14th on Saturday at 6:30 p.m. And uh, actually, uh, apparently, this was voted on during the women's meeting. So, men, we didn't have a say in this matter, but the women have spoken. It will be on Saturday now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're just going to meet together. We're going to play some bingo, have a good time, enjoy one another's company. Um, you should have received a colored basket. If you have not, then we can uh, let me know or let uh, Mireya know, and we can go ahead and get you one. And the idea is you fill that basket with food that matches the color. So let me give you an example. If you have red, you could bring pizza. Uh, if you have brown... Maybe you could bring pizza. Pizza. If you have, if you have green, you could probably bring a combination pizza. If you have yellow, you could bring pizza with. No, pineapple on pizza is from the devil. You would not bring that. You would just bring pizza with a little yellow cheese sprinkled on it. No pineapple. The devil invented that, I promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. So anyway, I want to encourage you guys to be there. That'll be, uh, now it's a Saturday at 6.30 p.m. We're just going to have a good time. There's going to be games, food, prizes. You'll enjoy yourself. We had a blast the last time we did it. 
And the last one, I just want to remind all the men that on Saturday the 21st, which is not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, we'll be doing breakfast at my home at 9 a.m. It's going to be a great time with the men uh, in fellowship with one another. We're going to be studying God's word, and it'll be a blessing to you. So I just want to encourage you to join us at that time. Now, without further ado, I want to invite Pastor Ron Simpkins up. He's a great man of God. You are going to be blessed this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate that. God bless you. Well, it's great to be back here. It's been, I think, a couple years since I was here. Amen. But uh, I'm back. Hallelujah. And prettier than ever. Amen. <laughs> Uh, we do uh, uh, kind of, I don't know if any of you ever see it, I do these little three-minute shots on Facebook. If you kind of like my stories, my jokes, then you can watch it there you know, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and uh, it's a good time. Uh, I've been at this a while, be 50 years next month, amen, that we've been preaching and been in the ministry, and uh, we've pioneered three churches and pastored six and traveled around the world and wrote a dozen books, amen, but I'm as excited to be here as anywhere I've been, hallelujah, and I'm hoping that uh, this morning will bless and challenge and change you. It's a, it's a sermon that has changed over the years multiple times, <laughs> but it's probably the sermon I've preached more than any other, and I call it the three P's, and it's just purpose, perspective, and perseverance. Amen? And so think about this with me. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 12, it says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Well, that alone is a, a whole idea in its own self. You know, basically it's saying in a very nice way, we're dirt and God. Amen. And uh, look at the person next to you and say, you're dirt and God. Hallelujah. Haven't heard that before, have you? Amen. But we were created, amen, out of the dirt of the ground, amen, and does anybody have any dirt, amen, in their life and even in these things, but yet we also have God, and that's what we want to think about, and here's scripture that just fascinates me, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us, and then he goes on, and there's a litany of very difficult kinds of things, he's, we, we are troubled on every side and yet not distress. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Always bearing about the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death, for Jesus' sake, that also Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh, Death worketh in us, but life in you. And that's a deep portion of Scripture, isn't it? Amen. And it's very challenging. And, and I think it's kind of saying, this is not supposed to be easy. Amen. I, I, I don't think life is something that is designed to be a trip to Disneyland. Amen. And I struggle with that sometimes. How can I understand what God's up to? Well, purpose, perspective and per perseverance. Find your purpose. Keep the right perspective. Amen is what we're saying. And don't quit. Amen. Look at the person next to you and say, don't quit. Don't quit. Amen. Uh, and it all starts with a purpose. Uh, devil's main goal is to keep you from your purpose. world says you're a monkey that lost its hair. Amen. Basically, you have no purpose. There's no reason for your life or, or meaning to who you are and what you are, but God says you are chosen by God. Before you were even created, God had you in his mind. Amen? Hallelujah. What a thought. Hey, but if we're not careful, we live life. Anybody here ever live your life without purpose or for the wrong purpose? I went to college one semester, and my purpose was not to go to a whole day of class. <laughs> that doesn't help you do well. Amen. I was the champion chugger at Northern Arizona University. Amen. I could drink a 12-ounce beer faster than anyone in the whole university. Woo! Amen. What a purpose to live for, huh? And God began to show me my purpose. You have a body, but you are 
a spirit. Amen. And there's something so profound in this, and we need to live by faith, amen, as heaven watches us. Amen. And so, something's here. There's a real devil. There's a real battle that we're facing and fighting. Amen. And there's something that should come. My life changed as I found the the Bible is my guide. How do I know my purpose? Read your Bible. Amen. Amen. Let the Lord speak to you. Amen. Give you direction. I found a church. I found a pastor. Things as simple as this have changed the whole course of my life. Amen. And maybe you're here and you're looking for why am I here? What's it all about? Amen. Well, I can tell you this. Your, your life is too valuable to waste. How many agree with me on that statement? Amen. Yeah, I've, yeah, I can say so many things. Amen. But there's, there's something here that's critical. And I think that most Christians never really fully understand just how important their life is. How important maybe just coming here today might be. Ha, I've got, I got a friend that uh, he ran a children's Bible camp for his whole life. Amen. What a, what a thing. Hundreds and hundreds of kids were changed and lives changed. You know why he got saved? He came to my wedding. He saw me raise my hands and it so flipped him out that I would raise my hands to God. Amen. That he found a church the next Sunday morning, sat on the steps till the pastor got there, gave his life to Christ, and has served God for the rest of his life. Well, thank God I raised my hands. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, the number one thing that most Christians need to do is get louder. Amen. Say, get louder. Amen. First altar call. Don't get too excited. We're not even close to the end. But... <laughs> But how many of you would say, I need to get louder? Your job, your work, your family, we need to get louder. Amen. Because we're chosen, we're anointed of God. I remember I was probably 18 years old, long time ago. I worked at Safeway. I came up to the register where Rose was. I said, I knew it was her birthday. She had just turned 50. And I said, happy birthday, Rose. And I'll never forget, she just bursts burst into tears. And she's just sobbing there. At the, I was embarrassed, can of corn in my hand, and I made this poor lady cry. And I, what's, what's the matter? And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she said, I've lived my life 50 years and I've done nothing. Yeah, well, thank God I can say, I've lived 75 years, but I've lived for something. And I have a purpose. Amen. And here's the main thing that God has been dealing with me about, and hopefully... Maybe it's been challenging you. Do you ever see, it's kind of a stupid movie, Anne Hathaway's in it, Princess Bride. <laughs> yeah, see, I can tell, I can tell you've seen it. And she's, she's this geeky high school girl, you know what I mean, who finds out that her grandmother is the queen of a country. And the whole movie is basically her being trained to be a queen. Princess, oh, is it Princess Diary? What did I say? No, never mind, doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Real close to offending Yeah, I did. Oh, well, I did. I definitely didn't mean to do that. Hallelujah. But in the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And in the, in the movie, they're trained. That's me and you. We're being trained to be kings and priests. Amen. We're being trained to be salt and light. Amen. And I challenge you to take on that, that transformation that needs to happen. Amen. For that to fully take place. Amen. And I think the devil tries to blind us and we said in these kinds of things, but your life makes a difference. Amen. And I know people that have been changed. Billy Hall's a friend of mine, pastor. He went to Folsom prison. He was, had seven life sentences and he got saved. And he spent the rest of his life changing the world, been to Ethiopia and all over and preached and helped starving and hurting people because Christ makes a difference. Amen. So part of what I'm trying to catch you to catch here too is how important you are. Does anybody else feel worthless on occasion? (laughs) Amen. You know, I mean, I I hear the devil more than I do God sometimes. (laughs) 
wave at me if anybody else knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, a lot of you do know. It, because we're just almost that dirt part of us. But I want you to hear this morning how precious well, you are. Like, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. And that's the message this morning. Amen. There's something powerful that can change us. And a key, though, to this, excuse me, I'm going to, there it is. <laughs> I'm going to run into the stool. <laughs> Pray for me. I've get my knees replaced here in a couple weeks. And I'm in terror and hope <laughs> at the same time. But the key to it is your perspective. Say perspective. 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 What do you see? What do you see? The Bible talks a lot about seeing and hearing. Amen. And there's something about us. The devil wants to blind us. Amen. To, to what God's up to. And we begin to become people that are in trouble. I was raised in church, uh, but I wanted to be Davy Crockett more than the Apostle Paul. You know what I mean? And I never got it until 1973. And I was sitting at a coffee shop in Little America, and finally I saw it. I needed a Savior. And that God had a plan for me. And, and I began to see the world is broken. And everything began to change. Amen. And this is maybe the most important thing that we can talk about. Hebrews 12 talks about a cloud of witnesses. Amen. Do you see the angels? Amen. That there's supernatural beings all around us. There's a war that's raging. Amen. When you got saved, you through the Word of God have a capacity to see things that the world doesn't see. And it's important for you to see them. It, it, it wave at me if you know what I'm talking about here. And I think this is what God's doing in the church more than anything else, is trying to give us this divine perspective. So think about a couple things to me. No, number one, nothing is that much fun. No, think about it yourself. To say, <laughs> I'll ask guys, what do you do for fun? I play football. Well, let's just run our heads into the wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I mean, there's nothing fun about it. You're killing yourself. <laughs> Amen. I, I like to run. Uh, you know, I, uh, some of you ladies, you, you went through tremendous pain to get here this morning. <laughs> Amen. You've twisted your hair in knots and, and you've put on contraptions that I can't even imagine having to wear. Amen. And it's all to, to look better, to be beautiful. And you are. But it's, it's, it's a little bit on the crazy side. <laughs> Amen. So, so part of what I'm trying to say, and I know I probably am an unusual preacher. <laughs> Several people said they remember me, and I, I knew that was only half a compliment. <laughs> they're, they're saying nobody's quite the same <laughs> as you are. And, and there's, it's so easy, though, for us to develop, a, uh, ne never to get the, the right paradigm. So God's been dealing with me a lot. I hear a gospel preached sometimes and makes it sound like I shouldn't have any trouble, no, no problems, I should never get sick, and here I can't even stand. <laughs> and so all of this can destroy my view of my life and the life of those around me. Because of something that's wrong. You know that for 2,000 years, doctors, when you were sick, they bled you? <laughs> well, I mean, an eight-year-old kid knows that's stupid. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But they probably killed George Washington. He, had a, he probably had a cold or the flu, and they bled him, and he died from that kind of a thing. These are the smartest people in the world, and they didn't know. Uh, one of the things, I wish I was born sometimes 200 years ago. You know why? Because 200 years ago, fat was in. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't be president of the United States if you didn't, wear 300, didn't weigh 300 pounds. Yeah, because the sign of wealth was fat. In fact, God says six times he's going to make you fat if he loves you. I don't know about some of you skinny people, but God loves me. <laughs> 
And so it's, and it's so easy to develop wrong paradigms, and they get you in all kind of trouble. Rules, religion, amen, that, that, it's, that it's all about that. And, but what it really is this morning, think with me for a moment, it's about endurance. Amen. It's about not quitting. It, it's about continuing. It's about being holy. It's about knowing God. I, I was in Philadelphia, and, and we saw, we were looking at, what was like, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence where it was written there. And it says, uh, 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 you know, and it talks about for happiness. We're, what is the term now? All of a sudden I'm drawing a blank. It's not my, but uh, all men are created equal. Ah, God. <laughs> and happiness. And they had a comment next to it. You know, when you see happiness, you think, well, happy, be happy. But that's not what it means. Literally in the 1700s, 1600s, when they wrote this, happiness meant a moral life. That the purpose of life was not to feel good all the time, but to be good all the time. Isn't that a powerful change, of, a change of thinking, of paradigm? Amen. And, and so God's doing something. The world can't see it. And if we're not careful, we don't see it. Amen. We don't see the glory. We don't see the beauty of the people that, we, that, are, that are struggling in this journey alongside of us. That we're blind to how important our lives are. Amen. And us keeping a good attitude even when we lose in bingo. Amen. <laughs> The cross to the world looks like defeat, doesn't it? But it's the victory, and it's the overcoming, and it's God's plan, and we know it. In 1981, there was an airline strike. I don't know if some of you are old enough to remember that. And it crippled America. Uh, uh, Reagan fired all, uh, a ton of them. And, uh, and they, the newspapers were filled with stories of how the airline controllers were the unhealthiest workers in America. They had more heart attacks, they had ulcers, they, they died younger than half of the workers in America. But I'll never forget reading another article, and that article, the guy looked at the other half. And so I never heard anything quite like it, but he, he said that the other half, so half are dying, they're sick, the other half are the healthiest workers in America they found. Can you imagine, one guy's working, and he's just about to, to die. He's so nervous about he's going to cause a wreck or something. I don't know what made him nervous. The pressure. And it still is that way and with, with these guys. Another guy's though saying, my job counts. I'm the luckiest guy in the world to have a job that really matters. And they thrive and they live longer. And the, and the article said the only thing they could find that was different was their attitude. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? Do you kind of get the idea here? I watch as a pastor. I see them coming in. This couple comes in. Here comes mama. Her Holy Ghost motor's already running before she's even come into church. Can't wait for the worship to start. woo You know what I mean. Hey, I mean and then behind her is Igor. <laughs> same place, same building, no difference. What's the difference? An attitude. It's an attitude. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in too deep to pull out now. <laughs> I, I'm going to take a chance that you guys can take some Bible verses. Amen. It's always dangerous with Christians. So many don't read the Bible. <laughs> but the Bible talks about sin, and it says, as a dog returns to its vomit. That's pretty gross. That's pretty gross, isn't it? Amen. I doubt if I could entice any of you. Hey, I got some fresh vomit here I brought to church. Yeah, he said, that's what Paul's doing though. And you know what he's talking about? He's talking about success in the world. You read that out. He's not talking about being a meth addict. He's talking about being rich, being famous. He said, it's nothing compared to what we are as Christians. Amen? Hallelujah. I count it all dung. You know what dung is? Poop. Poop. And, he, and, he, and, he, and he's talking about sin. How would it change our attitude if we started thinking of getting drunk as poop <laughs> and playing with poop? Amen. 
We need a new perspective. It says the, the God of this world is blinded. Amen. And it's talking about Christians that can be blinded. And so we have to develop a new perspective. Amen. Anybody here say, I, I need a new perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray real quick here. And, and we got another point, but Father, we just, we release eyes to see, God. We release, God, your, your freedom, your joy in our life. God, I ask you to show us just how lucky we are, amen, to be here this morning and to be your children and to be Americans and to, and to be here without the fear of wars and famine that they're happening everywhere. But God, you've put us in a place of protection. You love us, God. Show us who you are and show us who we are. We pray it in Jesus' name. I, uh, I sat in a class for a year with uh, Dr. Larry Crabb. He's a counselor, one of the most famous counselors, Christian counselors. And I'll never forget one day he came in. He said, I had a guy come in this today, and uh, uh, he's probably his wife sent him. <laughs> Amen. Because he didn't seem to really want to, you know, be a Christian. And uh, he, I guess he walks in and he says, make me happy right now. And Dr. Crabb told us, he told him, he said, well, then I'd recommend a six-pack and a prostitute. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think, what? And that's what the guy said. He said, I can't make you happy right now. That's not what the Bible talks about. You know what it talks about? That if you will trust God and you will play your part and trust him and move, you will find joy. You'll find happiness. Am I, am I preaching to anybody? This morning, and many of you are, and and what I'm trying to do this morning in simplicity is encourage even some of you that are just here, who came to prayer this morning, or who came here to this service, who who worshipped and who did it. It's the most important thing that happens on earth, Amen. And we need a new perspective, and to do that, then we have to persevere. Say persevere. It's tough but valuable. I, I, that's, a Christian isn't, uh, that, though I know a lot of happy Christians, and don't get me wrong, I believe that we're probably the most blessed people. We live in a time that's more freedom, more blessing than ever before, but we're not in heaven. Has anybody noticed that? <laughs> we're not yet in heaven. And, and it's for that joy ahead that we're enduring. Amen. Amen. And that we're holding on. And that we're breaking down. And so that may be the most important thing. You know, the Bible talks a lot about taking up your cross. And it just doesn't sound like a giggles and laughter all the time. To despise the shame, amen, that, that sometimes can come on us. That he that endures to the end is the one that will be saved. Amen. Listen to Hebrews 12, 1 to 4. Lay aside every weight of the sin that does so easily beset you. Amen. And let us run with patience the race set before us. And let, uh, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the same, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. There's going to take some endurance. Here's the problem in life. The good people get tired of being good before the bad people get tired of being bad. Is there anybody that was a sinner at one point in your life? Amen. Several, several of you. You know, I, w I was a sinner. I was committed to sin. I'd get strep throat. I'd just switch to menthol. You know, I didn't, I didn't quit smoking because <laughs> I was hardcore. Amen. And this is the hassle in the world if we're not careful. We, we just don't prepare for the race. Uh, I was in a fraternity in college. I went to Northern Arizona University, got a master's degree there. And I was in a fraternity, and we would compete in all these competitions, and they had these races. Uh, it was, uh, the what, what do you call them, you know, where you run and jump and had to do hurdles and all that stuff. Yeah, track and field. And so uh, we were actually doing pretty good, so we drafted Brennan and Mad Dog. They were two of the guys in the fraternity that had been runners 
but <laughs> in college they'd become drinkers and not runners. And so they had this strategy, they're going to run the mile race, and Brennan was supposed to take off, and he was going to run real hard and get out in front and wear everybody out. Mad Dog was going to hang back in the back so that he would have, you know, energy at the end. Well, the problem is the gun fires, they're running, and Mad Dog, here's behind him, Brennan. He's in such bad shape. <laughs> he never even got to the front. <laughs> Amen. And he just kind of even rolled to a stop, I think it was. And Mad Dog, as God is my witness, he got to the three-quarter mile. <laughs> he wasn't even close to the front. He was so bad shape that he tripped on the, part, on the edge of the track and ran head for, first into the goalpost and knocked himself out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It was hysterical. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but, it, but it was not uh, great. Amen. And so I, I say that uh, because uh, the hassle is, is if we're not careful, we're just not preparing. I, I think I went to the gym for the first time when I was 40 or something, which is, that's a long time ago now, but it seemed ancient when I was there because I'd never been in shape, but I thought, man, I'm going to die if I don't do something. And I was kind of having fun until one of the guys from the church went with me, you know, and I'm like, I'm riding my little bicycle, you know, and I don't have any tension on it or anything. If I start to sweat, I quit. <laughs> and I'm watching, the, I'm watching this guy, if I, Ted was his name even, I, Ted's pushing weights. He goes, now, if I can't push this weight anymore, then you help me. I, what? I, I, I don't even know what he's talking about. I, he said, spot me. I <laughs> Okay, you know, I, I, I had a clue what's going on. And, and I'll never forget, he's there pushing on the, and he's, you know, and I, I'm going to help him, man. I think he's going to kill himself. And he goes, no, not yet, not yet. And I'm thinking, my God, I'm supposed to be doing that? I mean, I guess you don't even work out until you tear the old muscle down to rebuild the new. Well, so many Christians think they're running the race when they're, when they're just kind of skipping along. <laughs> Amen. It's time, and we're in the times, that we need to push ourselves. Does that make sense? Wave at me if that makes sense to you. And I'm not talking about a possible thing. This is to make your life better. This is so you don't get deceived. This is so we can be there to help those that are hurting and are broken. And it's building up your spiritual understanding and strength that is such a powerful thing in our life. All the suffering and frustration that we go through. Catch, catch this. Has, has anybody had some bad seasons? Amen? Any, anybody gone through some challenging kinds of times? But you know what? As a Christian, everything has meaning. All things, everything that happens to me is for me. <laughs> uh, I, I forget that sometimes. Hallelujah. And you, and you, you don't realize this, this is really about eternity. Amen. And, and some people that I, I'm jealous of, I think, oh my God, they have no problems. They're so blessed. Amen. Yeah, they got no rewards in heaven. Amen. What, whatever you get a reward for in heaven is going to be something you paid a price for here. Isn't that a wild thought? Amen. Amen. I remember I went to Indonesia uh, for, to preach for a friend of mine, and, and man, they, they were actually killing Christians in the city we were preaching in. It was a pretty freaky place, you know, and tough things were happening. And I asked him, I said, what do you want me to preach on? Because we hadn't been able to communicate. He's in, he's in the Indonesia you know, and there were guys from China and, Indo and Vietnam and all over the world that were there at this time. He says, I want you to preach on suffering. <laughs> well, I was offended, <laughs> you know, a little bit because I wanted to be known for prosperity. I didn't want to be known for suffering. But it hit me. I said, at least I'm known for something. Woo! <laughs> Amen. And you know what? I, I have a feeling that I won't regret a day that's been in my life. Even the most difficult seasons and times and challenges because everything, 
everything is building up a reward. Wow. Am I talking to anybody this morning? We have huge help. We have forgiveness and we have prosperity. And this is a place that's blessed beyond imagining in many ways. Amen. But we've got to have the understand our purpose, our perspective, and we've got to persevere. Let me close with this. It says in Ephesians 6, 10 to 13, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, amen, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness in the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you be able to withstand an evil day and having all, done all, to stand. Well, what's he talking about? Let, let me close with this story. When, like I said, I was in a fraternity, and uh, we had to compete in everything, and it came time for wrestling. Well, in, where I was at in school, there weren't a lot of wrestlers. But my dad was a wrestling coach. My brother was a champion wrestler, so I wasn't much of a wrestler. But just to survive in my family, you had to know something. <laughs> And so they, they, they asked me to, to, to wrestle. Well, I also knew that you're an idiot to get in the ring with a guy that's in good shape and you're not, and somebody who knows how to twist your leg around you three times and stick it in your ear. Amen. And so I, I wasn't going, but they told me this. They said, Ron, don't worry. Nobody will be there. And you can just roll over and throw the match, and the fraternity will get one point. You know, well, I don't mind being a fool as long as nobody sees me. <laughs> you know, so, so I said, sure, I'll, I'll go wrestle. Well, I knew I was in trouble when we were two blocks away from the women's gym at Northern Arizona University, and I heard a roar coming out of the gym. Well, there were 300 guys wrestling. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good-sized crowd in itself. And they had pulled the women's bleachers out. And one side of the gym was full of people. I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 people are there. There's a roar coming out. And I know this is going to be bad. <laughs> this is going to be. And it, was wor- it got worse because the guy I have to wrestle, he's a real wrestler. <laughs> Amen. All of him is up here. All of me is down here. And, and you know what I mean? And so I knew I had to do something tricky. So I actually made up my own wrestling maneuver. I call it the spider. <laughs> and it's very simple. If any wrestlers are here, feel free to use it. I'm sure there's, there's a way of breaking it, but this guy never figured it out. And what it is is very simple, that as we got in there, you know, and they're, and they're making you, you know, get the opposite each other. There were three rings going, you know, or three mats going at the same time, crowds cheering. I get out there, and I know I, this is going to be painful. But the spider is real simple. When they blew the whistle, what I did was just jump into the middle of the mat and lay there <laughs> with my arms and legs spread like this. It's hard to turn a guy as big as I am <laughs> with your arms and legs. I'm sure there's a gimmick, probably some of you know, but this guy didn't know and I didn't know. So he's jumping on me, and he's grabbing my arm and grabbing my leg, and he's spinning and trying to kill me, and I'm thinking, he's going to kill me, you know? I'm just laying there, and I'm getting exhausted. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know much about wrestling, but I, I remembered that something about if you got off the mat, you know, that they had to stop it. So I'm headed for the edge, and it's with him on my back, and I, I got off the mat, and they, they blew the whistle, you know, and I thought, wow. It's over, but then they made me get back in the middle again <laughs> and do the spider. It seemed like three days went by, but I think it was three minutes. <laughs> and the second period comes, and man, I can't even stand up. I have to crawl to get over there almost. And, and, uh, and this guy is really upset now because, uh, because, again, my friends, like even Joe Weidinger was actually there that day. Uh, who's over preaching at the mother church right now. It, and, and about 30 or 40 of them had kind of formed a ring around the mat, and they're cheering me on, <laughs> laughing and cheering, yeah, you know. And, and, uh, and this guy is embarrassed because he's in good shape, and, and he's threatening me. I'm going to put you in a 
knuckle buster or whatever. <laughs> I don't know the wrestling terms, but you know where they basically, like I said, twist your arm around you three times and, and then break it. Uh, and I, I'm freaking out, you know, I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to die. I, my heart's pumping like crazy, and all of a sudden they blow the whistle to start the second period, and I just, ah, and jumped up and ran. And I got an escape. I got two points. <laughs> you know, I'm winning. Ah, hallelujah. But I had to come back and do the spider again. And I lay in there, and this guy's trying to kill me and, uh, and all this stuff. And I, I can't even now, second period comes to an end. I can't even breathe. It just spots in front of my eyes. You know what I mean? I'm in bad shape. But I realize he's as bad as I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually on top of him, you know, in the wrestling deal. And, and when they blow the whistle, he just fell on my arm. I thought I was trapped. You know, you just can't even think. You're so little oxygen and these kinds of things. But what had begun to happen is as we've been wrestling, I guess I had caught more and more the attention of the crowd. And so this is like the Pillsbury Doughboy is <laughs> defeating Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> And this crowd of 1, 1,500 people, all of a sudden they hear my buddies, Joe and them, they, they're there by the mat, and they start to go, Simpkins, Simpkins, that, by, that's my name by the way, Simpkins, turn him, turn him, and there are like 40 of them, but as they start to say that, all of a sudden this crowd of 1, 1,500 start to, Simpkins, Simpkins, Turn him, and new energy flowed into my body. And I grabbed his arm, I turned him over, and I pinned him, and I won. Woo! I won. God's my witness. So is Joe Weidinger. Yeah. <laughs> I was so tired. They threw me in a corner. I couldn't even move for an hour, I think. I just like, <gasps> trying, to, trying to get oxygen into me. But I won. And I said that to say this. <laughs> there, is a, there is a meaning to this. In Ephesians it said, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but we are wrestling. And what does it say? Stand. That in the King James. Simpkins translation, do the spider. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. With the devil's after you t today, this morning. Amen. Amen. Stretch your arms and legs out. Hang on. Heaven's going to start to chant, Wayne, Wayne, <laughs> turn him, turn him. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Father, we come to you. Lord, hopefully your people have had fun this morning. God, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. But also, God, hopefully they've heard from your spirit. And you're challenging them. Is there anybody here this morning that's not saved? You've never given your life to Christ, or you need to come back to Him. You'd raise your hand. You'd put it up, put it down. Anyone at all? I think probably most of the crowd, you, you responded like a Christian, so I assume you are one. But if anybody's here, we would take, count it an honor to be able to pray for you. Amen. Then let's change the call. While heads are still bowed, eyes are, is anybody in a tough place right now? And you'd say, I, I am, I'm in the fight. I'm in the middle of it. You'd raise your hand. Amen. 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 Quite a few. Father, we pray you would strengthen us. God, you would show us that even though it feels like we can't keep going, we can. God, that you would give us the supernatural strength to endure. And not just endure, but God, to find your purpose and your freedom and your joy even in the battles and the challenges that we face. In fact, is there anybody too, and I'm not going to ask anybody to embarrass himself or come forward, but you you're literally are struggling with your perspective in job or marriage, amen, or, or even your faith, your Christianity. You'd raise your hand. You'd say, I'm in a struggle. Yes, yes. Very common. I, I, I wouldn't lie to you. That's why I'm preaching this. Amen. That it's not supposed to be easy. 
You're not doing wrong. It's not generally even your fault. It's because there's a real devil. God, give us eyes to see this morning. Give us the courage, God, to not quit, to endure, to to fight the good fight. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for this body. God, I pray that, God, you would bring in the right people. God, that even this year, I, I believe, God, you're going to bring growth, expansion, amen, health into the body. Well, heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed. Is there anyone here that you... This is a kind of weird call, I know, but I'm weird. You know you're supposed to be building this church. Maybe you haven't been taking your place. You're, you, you, you have a gift, maybe even of evangelism or reaching out. And you know that you're supposed to help build the church. You'd raise your hand. You'd put it up and put it down. Amen. This morning. God brought you here. There generally is at least three or four in a group this size. Anyone, you'd raise your hand. You'd say, I, I know I'm supposed to be doing this, and I'm going to begin to take it more serious. Father, we pray you would strengthen and enlarge. And God, we pray that you would cause us to become fruitful. Lord, not just in answered prayer, not just in being loving and kind, but God fruitful, that we would, we would see fruit come into your kingdom, lives to be changed and hearts touched. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You can look at me. Well, I'll tell you, number one, if you didn't like that message, next time I come, don't come. <laughs> because that's, that's about the best I have. Amen. Uh, but but we hope you did. And if you do like our stories, like I said, Facebook, Ronald Simpkins, amen. We do the little three-minute vignettes, and uh, we, we do them five days a week, Monday through Friday. And you're more than welcome to join us. They've been touching a lot of people, and pe- a lot of people have said they've helped them, amen, to get through the day. But I just thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting your pastor. He's become a real friend. And I was looking forward to being able to come and, uh, and be with you guys again. And hopefully it'll happen again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you. Pastor? Well, thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. We yeah. uh, appreciate having you out here. And uh, uh, we're going to go and close the service now. If anybody would like to just talk to Pastor Ron or if you'd like prayer from him, um, he does have a prophetic gift, and uh, I would just encourage you to do so. Um, I didn't ask him if that was o- that was okay, but I'm no, sure it's it fine. is. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. So I would just encourage you to speak to him. Um, have him pray for you. And pardon? Oh, that hurt somebody. Sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, stand to our feet. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your great love. Lord, I thank you that. Your word is relevant today as it ever was, Father, that it speaks to us, that it ministers to us. And, and I, I pray, Father, that as we leave here, we, we all think about those, those three Ps, Father, particularly the persevering, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that we have uh, grown today, that we've been challenged, and that uh, I pray that we would continue to grow and mature, Father, and step out into what you've called us to do. Father, to to continue fighting the good fight of faith, never giving up. We just thank you for victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, you are dismissed, church. And like I said, uh, if you need prayer, I would love to pray for you. Pastor Ron would love to pray for you. Otherwise, have a wonderful, wonderful week, and we'll see you soon. Be blessed.